And then I want you to look at these six key bullet points. Good agents have these tattooed on their lower back. If you want to know how to get them to use you and not the other person, this is how you do it. You add more value than the other person. If we talk about how to convert real estate leads by adding value, I'm going to talk about that listing e alert function that has been around and provided by your multiple listing service probably since 2005 ish. I mean, it's been around forever, ever since the internet was integrated and listings were put online. One of the first features, one of the most valuable tools that the MLS's, the multiple listing services across the country brought us was the listing e alert. And what that means is, hey, I've got a buyer. This is it, it was its original purpose. And we still use it for this too. It's typically the reason we use listing e alerts. I'm just going to expand on it quite a bit. You have a buyer, buyer's looking for property. Right now, especially, you better have everybody you know looking for property on a listing e alert because it's a low inventory market right now. So it's very hard for you. I mean, you want them to know the minute a listing comes up for sale that fits their specific criteria, we got to be all over it, Johnny on the spot. I mean, email comes out, listing goes up, we have to jump on it and we have to get out there and we have to get them in that property and, and we have to be very strong about it because there'll typically be multiple offers on it. So we got to move fast and then we have to educate our clients. So we're going to set all our buyers up on listing e alerts. If that makes sense to everybody. That's pretty basic. You probably went to MLS orientation and they taught you about this. I'm assuming that I haven't wowed you. Now, I do want to show you how that looks though. So what I'd like to do is share my screen with you and talk a little bit about the script because I think this one is gonna excite you a little bit, right? Especially for all you Zillow haters out there, I'm gonna spread the hate, which I don't usually do. But here is our buyout, we call it auto prospecting, right? It's our buyer auto prospecting script. And with buyer auto prospecting, you can see that the most desirable homes listed at the lowest prices sell the fastest. So you don't ever get to see them on Zillow and other secondary websites. Homes on those websites are actually the homes that most people did not want. You see all home listings are initially listed in the Realtors Multiple Listing Service online database of homes for sale. Then the listing information is sent through digital feeds to other secondary sources and then onto these other websites. This is why the information on these sites is often incorrect and a week or two old. So that's why websites like Zillow do not off have the same number of listings as our MLS does. If you are looking for homes on Zillow, you're just seeing the leftovers that no one else wanted. Are you following me? Plus many offices, companies, and associations of realtors do not allow digital feeds to go to secondary websites like Zillow. So not only do you miss out on the homes that have already sold quickly, the ones that everyone wanted, but there are many active listings that you don't see at all. Does that make sense? So if you want to see all the listings, the minute they go up for sale and get full realtor access, I can easily set you up on our buyer search tool so that you can see what the real estate agents see as soon as they see it. You can look at the homes online, in the privacy of your own home on your own time with absolutely no pressure, no obligation. I can even set the system up to send you email notifications the minute new homes hit the market that fits the specific criteria you are looking for in a home if you happen to see the inside of one of them. You can just reply to the email, call me and we'll get you inside quickly. Would that be a benefit to you? Okay. So I'm gonna switch that around. So understand anytime we convert a buyer lead, guys, always get them off of Zillow or realtor.com. You have got to move them over to get full realtor access. Because if they're on Zillow or realtor.com, they are not seeing all the homes that are for sale and they're missing out on all of the best homes that are priced the best and are in the best condition that sell right away and never make it to Zillow. So we have got to get them off of the crack cocaine that they're smoking and into your healthy lifestyle that gives them full realtor access into the multiple listing service. They're going to see listings before almost all of the agents in the market because you guys don't look at all the new listings every single day that come up, right? They're, so they're going to get the ones that fit their criteria right away. Make sense? So you do have something of value. If you don't think you have that of value, we have a huge problem. I mean, we have a huge problem. Your, your context in your head is off.
because trust me, people are always asking what are homes selling for? They're always, hey, what did that home sell for? What's that house up for sale for? They have no freaking idea. That's what they need us for. And if we don't tell them that we have the best source of that information, guess what? It's how all these online premium portals win. The reason Zillow and Realtor.com are, are much more popular search sites than your local MLS is because realtors don't care. They just kind of lazy. They don't, you know what I mean? They just let their, their, uh, their information go to waste where Zillow and Realtor.com went after the search. I'm telling you the way to get it back is use your mouth, convert with it, use it as a special tool they don't know about. To you and me, it might be old hat, but to them, it makes a big, big difference. So this needs to be a part of your buyer lead conversion process. The first thing we do is we try to talk to them. We convert that into an appointment in that appointment. We try to get enough information by filling out a buyer lead sheet so that we can set them up on a listing e-alert search. Then we stay with them. We call and provide customer service. Now, if they want to wait till February to start buying a house, we have a reason to keep calling them. Hey, we can follow up with them. Are you getting too many emails? Do you want me to expand the search? Do we want to bring the search down? How about, did you like that one I sent you? This one seemed to fit your parameters. Did you see that one? I saw that one for you. Want to make sure you looked at it. Great. So we have a reason to stay in touch, a real reason, a reason that's in direct alignment with their goals. You know, cause you know what you want to do. You want to say, are you ready yet? Are you ready yet? Are you ready yet? But we can't do that. We have to have something to give. And what we're trying to do is get ourselves in a position where we're working for them so that our calls to follow up are customer service. If we get them hooked on our listing e-alert tool, then they are receiving a service from us, which means we are now working for them. And when we are working for them, we can actually continue to follow up and continue to work for them, all the while enhancing and increasing that peer accountability, where if they were to work and buy with somebody else, they would really start to feel bad because we've done so much work for them. But you have to do the work. So you have to set them up on this tool and realize this is very, very powerful for them. And if they say, oh, I don't want a lot of emails, then dial it down. Really, really refine the search to a small amount of emails. Because what I'm doing is I'm setting up a reason to stay in contact. If I don't use the phone and I don't stay in contact, then you're missing the whole point of the listing e-alert. The listing e-alert is not to set it and forget it and hope they respond to one of your emails down the road. That won't happen. They will use your emails, they will be up to date, and then they will use the next agent that they come in contact with. But if you continue to reach out and add value and help them out and point things out, check on them, they will be obligated to you. They will use you. It's your ultimate follow-up tool. It's much better than like a refrigerator magnet with a calendar on it. This is actually very professional and very real estate relevant, okay? And this is, I, I, I'm pretty sure that I'm showing you something that you've all used before or know you should have, I'm hoping that some of the scripts and dialogues in there can help you get more people off of a Zillow app or a realtor.com app onto a much more viable platform that will help them get what they need um, a lot more efficiently. Does that make sense? Any thoughts on that one? Uh, Philip you? here. I, hey, Philip. I, I, hey, I totally agree with you. I, a lot of my, my most recent buyer leads, I just had them on a drip campaign. And then sure enough, I can see them harding properties and they email me about them. The buyer that's been inactive for maybe six months finally reached out to me. I got them updated on their pre-approvals and everything. We're going out this weekend on a purchase around 600,000. So not, not a bad situation there. That's awesome, man. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Yeah, I don't know how you, I mean, it's really hard to follow up with people without that. I, I don't know how you do it. Like you have to literally look for them and send them a bunch of properties. I guess every now and then and miss a whole bunch. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know how it gets done. Well, to Jose's point on command. So I started, I really started embracing it maybe the last two months of getting people's emails and then putting them on some sort of uh, market update. And so now it's twofold. You know, if they're in an area where they've told me, hey, this is what we want, I'll kind of get them in that map zone. And then they receive an update once a month there. And then on through the MLS or through our MLS, I'll have them specifically on different houses in a much more wider net area. So on command, it, it, it reflects around their home value. There we go. On the MLS, it's based on what they would purchase, where they would move up to. 
And right now I've got 65 or 67 people on buyer opportunity and about 45. And some of those are duplicates because remember they're selling and buying or and all that fun stuff or buying and selling in some cases. Um, and then 45 listing opportunities as well. So then those emails are constantly going out once a month on the touch and then on the purchase side, they're, they're starting to pop up too. Also on investment as well, like the nursing home or convalescent home and stuff like that. It's just a care facility. I love it. That's a great segue. I mean, I couldn't have timed that any better because I want to switch over to the seller side of this. I just shared that script with you in the uh, chat room. Now let's talk about the seller side, right? And that's great because I mean, that's to me, this is where people don't typically know. They're like, oh, because if they say I want to list my house for sale, oftentimes people don't realize we can set them up on a seller listing e alert. And it's the same exact tool, right? And so what we can do. It, and this is all free guys. I mean, this is stuff that you get with your CRM that we've gotten with our MLS even for a long time. I mean, th these are things we're just using tools differently because I know if I'm looking to list my house for sale until I'm ready to list, I'm going to set myself up on a seller listing e-alert. Why? I want to know what, you know, when one of my competitors or one, one of my neighbor's homes goes up for sale. I want to see what price it is. I want to look through photos of the home just because I'm a human, which means I'm nosy, which means I want to look through other people's houses. I want to see how it might compare to mine, how their amenities and features might compare to mine. Um, I want to see the price. I want to see how quickly it sells. I want to see what price it ultimately sells for when it goes sold. So I want to see how much the value of my home is increasing from month to month based on these new sales and new listings, right? See how this keeps me up to date on the overall value of my house, my biggest asset, my biggest liability, and the overall value of the entire neighborhood. So all of a sudden, I mean, if you do this with a seller now in October and they stay on this all the way until spring, it's amazing. You'll, it'll be the first seller on the planet that you sit down and he actually tells you or he or she tells you a legitimate list price. And you're like, yeah, I agree. <laughs> you know, because they're freaking educated. They're not unrealistic. So it actually does the work. So you don't have to go in and argue with them. It's doing the work the whole time. They actually are educated. They know what the comps are. They know what's not selling. They know what prices aren't selling because they're watching all of that. And it gives you a reason to follow up with that seller in the meantime. You can say, hey, did you see that home of your neighbors came up to sell? Did you look here? I'll send it back to you again if you missed it. Look through this one. This is the closest one I've seen that comes up to your house. You know what I mean? Like now all of a sudden I am getting into a level of customer service before even a listing appointment than any realtor they've ever worked with. Is This is starting to create a wow factor. I'm analyzing saying this one, if we can get this one to sell somewhere close to asking price, this will increase the value of your home and we might be able to go up a little bit with our list price. So keep an eye on that one. Let's cheer for it together, right? Or if one of the homes in their neighborhood goes pending or sells, we can call them with that information. If you are in an MLS, that does not make that information public in listing e-alerts, which some aren't, some do, some don't. Um, I know some of you do, some of you don't. In other words, if a listing e-alert cannot go out for a sold or for a pending, that's just one more thing you can call them about and let them know, here's what it ultimately sold for. This is a key comp for us. This, is, this one's gonna dictate um, the appraised value of your home uh, more than any of the other sales. And that's very valuable information, right? It gives you a way to nurture your sellers over a period of time in a very meaningful contributory way that is, that is um, not just, hey, are you ready yet? Okay. So let me show you what this script looks like here. Um, this one's important and I'm going to share it with you. I'll scoot in. This is our seller auto email script. Hi, it's Brian. I wanted to give you a heads up that I've set you up on our new neighborhood update tool and would love to hear your feedback on it. My clients really love it. You can change this script. I'm okay with it. This tool will really help you stay educated about your home's value, neighborhood's conditions leading up to whenever you're ready to move. It might even help you decide when you want to put your home up for sale. Here's the important part. Here's how it works. When one of your neighbors puts their home up for sale, you'll immediately get an email with all the listing information and photos of the home. This way you'll be able to, and then I want you to look at these six key bullet points. Good agents have these tattooed on their lower back. I mean, this is super important that you know how to sell your lead conversion tool, okay? 
We have to. We have to, I mean, in everything we do, we have to say, first and foremost, it'll let you look through photos of your neighbor's home because that, believe it or not, is what everybody wants to do. So you gotta give that one out there, okay? Number two, it helps you compare their amenities to yours. You can know the price of each listing. You can see how quickly each home sells and the prices that they sell for, how the value of your home's increasing over time, and it keeps you up to date on the neighborhood's market conditions, okay? That's something you provide to every single seller if you have someone that you know is looking to list their house for sale in two weeks, in six weeks, in six months, anyone that you know, we must get them set up on this tool now. As a, This is what gets us a little bit closer to a listing appointment. Does that make sense? It also gets us closer to a price reduction. So if you have a listing that's waiting to go live, please get them on these listing e-alert emails. Okay, because that gets them educated and they get more realistic about their price. They start to see which priced homes are selling in their neighborhood and which ones aren't. Okay, so that gets them very real in a hurry. Otherwise, they're just sitting in the dark, listening to what comes out of your mouth. And that makes your mouth the enemy because you're always telling them bad news. Let the market do the talking. Set them up because that'll set up price reductions if you do happen to be overpriced. And right now in the lowest inventory market in the history of the country, I probably would be taking a lot of overpriced listings. There's never been a better time because they're selling anyway and they're appraising anyway. Uh, and if they don't, you better be ready to reduce them and get real because so, otherwise you're gonna let those listings go. They're gonna go to another agent and that other agent is gonna get it sold and you're gonna get frustrated. So there's never been a time to be gobbling up listings. If that makes sense, okay? So understand this is a customer service tool. So we want to let them know it's a customer service tool. And if for any reason you don't want it, you just let me know. I can shut them down or you can unsubscribe yourself. And now you have a reason to follow up with them and ensure that we're staying in contact with them over time. Anyone started trying to use those before? Got a few hands going up there too. Have you guys found that sellers are more educated when it comes time to determining price when you have them set up on listing e-alerts leading up to them? Absolutely. I have noticed that too. I have noticed that in, in, a, in a very big, very big way. Ryan, and you know what? And the clients appreciate when you send them lists of homes and make them aware that this is what the system that we use as agents. So it's not something that is outside. So they really appreciate. I agree. Thank you. Yeah. It's like you're letting them in and you're giving them special access that only realtors have. I mean, it is... Quite frankly, I mean, I know this doesn't necessarily put us in the best light, but I'll tell you, it really is the tool. It's the aspect of having a realtor they appreciate the most. You know what I mean? They feel smarter about real estate. Yep, yep, agreed. And what's funny is so many agents don't use it. Almost no one uses it on the listing side, right? So if you're the first agent, because you, you hear them say, oh, I've sold eight houses before. I know what I'm doing. I've sold 10 houses, blah, 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 right? But if you're the first one that starts to update them on the listing side with this, I'm telling you, you'll be, I mean, all of a sudden you're just head and shoulders above any other agent they've ever worked with, okay? All right, so you ready to go next level with this? Because we're still like, I mean, I showed you the buyer tool. You probably thought it was like MLS orientation. And then, then the listing tool hopefully said, okay, there's something I could use. So now we're gonna go a little bit higher. Now imagine there's a specific neighborhood you want to work in, okay? So let's say you are looking to farm, do a geographic farm in a specific neighborhood. Maybe you wanna get a higher price point. You wish you sold more expensive homes. Best way to do that typically is target neighborhoods that are higher priced. I and mean, then we target those and we market those. Now, I don't want to get too much into geographic farming. That's a whole different session. If you guys want to talk about that sometime, I'd love it. But for now, I do want to show you how we use it for that too, right? So it's very easy to get email addresses for entire neighborhoods. It is very easy to get contact information for entire uh, neighborhoods. You do have to pay for them. Um, there's a great company out there called Coal Information Services or Coal Realty, and that's spelled C-O-L-E. Um, I will write that in the chat room, but it's, it's spelled C-O-L-E and you can actually purchase a good percentage of most neighborhoods contact information. I mean, you're usually looking at a minimum of 50% of the emails and cell phone numbers you can get up to 80%. Either way, that's better than we've ever had by way of accessible contact information. And now we can start setting people up on listing e-alert searches because quite frankly, everybody in any given neighborhood 
is always going to want to know which homes are coming up the market. You know how I know that? Because if you ever hold an open house, think about all the looky-loo neighbors. Anytime you hold an open house, they want to know. They, they want to look through it. In fact, there's a whole lot that want to look through it that don't take the time because they don't want to stop, talk to you, they're not, they don't have done their hair, you know, all that kind of stuff. But if they can look through the photos and take their time anytime they want, rather than like in the middle of a Saturday or something, and they don't have to leave the confines and privacy of their own home, they would absolutely love it, right? So this is a way to keep all the neighbors up to date on how this, on how their market is changing, how the value of their home's going up, and just kind of keeping them in the know. So really it's the same script. Look over here, guys. We changed the intro a little bit, but here we are with the same six bullet points that should already be tattooed on your back. You can see them all the way through here. If we can get quick with those bullet points, we can sell this value at an open house. We can sell it over a circle prospecting call. We can sell it to anybody we come in contact with because quite frankly, any human that you meet, you can use this script. Any friend you have, you can use this script anywhere. There is, other than maybe kids under the age of 18, I probably wouldn't use it on them. I don't see them as valuable home buyers. But really there is, other than that, there's no human we shouldn't be setting up on a listing e-alert search. First time home buyers or buyers, we put them on listing e-alerts for buyers. Any homeowner, we can put them on a listing search, right? So we can use that to farm a neighborhood and that'll give us a, a way that we can get out there and use those same bullet points. Let me show you another little marketing touch up here. Let me show you how some guys have taken it next level. Here's our neighbor. This is like a simple, this is, I'll share this with you too. This is a very um, editable. This is just a Word document so you can easily edit it. But this is a neighborhood update. And you can see it's like a social media post where it talks about all six of those bullet points. Um, so you might send an email to everyone in the farm to just to let them know we're going to set you up on these. So be expecting an email. Okay. Because sometimes your portal isn't, you know, doesn't quite convey what you're trying to do, or you're posting it, you're boosting a post or retargeting a post on Facebook to a specific geographic neighborhood, marketing your tool to be able to keep everyone in the neighborhood up to date. So they have a chance to be the first to know when one of their own home neighbors home sells or goes up for sale, right? Uh, could be the body of your email, like I said, as well too, okay? So getting out there, you know, we're supposed to be good at marketing. So it's very, I mean, one of the biggest problems with the listing e-alert tool is an inability to market it. So we have to be able to sell the six bullet points and we want to get that out there to geographic neighborhoods. So that is the idea behind it. This will also work with your SOI. This is the one I love the most, right? So I saved that for, I actually showed you the SOI one. Um, I do want to show you guys the geographic farming one too. And I'm just going to throw that one into the uh, chat room as well. So you should be getting four total scripts plus that one marketing thing that you can make your own. I mean, that's not the best, not the best graphic design on that, but we are, uh, we can certainly, you know, edit it any way you want or create your own marketing. But the key is to get those six bullet points in there so we can quickly convey. Does that make sense? So with our SOI, it's the same thing. Everyone in your SOI either wants to buy or sell or anyone that owns a home, we could be keeping them up to date too. So between now and the end of the year, it's not uncommon for agents to try to get every one of their SOI members, which is your sphere of influence, people you know who know who you are, set up on a listing e-alert search, even though they have no intentions of buying or selling right now. But like you, I mean, wouldn't you want to know if you own a home, wouldn't you want to know if one of your neighbors around the corner's home went up for sale? Wouldn't you want to know how much it sold for, how that impacts you? It's a chance for you truly to stay first of mind, make consistent contacts, and add true real estate relevant value. When I say real estate relevant value, I mean real estate relevant. I mean, not what most agents use, like Here's a, like I said, there's a calendar magnet. I mean, and these things work. I'm not knocking calendar magnets, but it only has so much impact with regards to getting them to use you. That just keeps you first to mind. If you're starting to do this though, it's real estate relevant. They start to respect you. They don't just like you. Now they respect you. They respect the service and the tools you're providing. You're starting to do work for them, which makes them obligated to you and appreciative of, of your work. And it helps them self-justify why they want to use you. So understand, 
you're not every all the people in your sphere of influence they're not just in your sphere of influence they're often in another agent's sphere of influence too if you want to know how to get them to use you and not the other person this is how you do it you add more value than the other person there's a lot of agents out there that are very timid well that person they already know another agent that person they know and they well come on guys the whole idea is to get them into your soi so get them in and that's how you do it you have superior tools you have superior systems you have all the means nothing i've said costs a nickel i didn't even ask you to pick up a phone isn't that weird like all this stuff is ready for you so if this doesn't do it for you whoo I don't know what to tell you. This should do it. Make sense? All right. Thoughts, questions, concerns, ideas. I mean, as I just say, all, all of this works. I mean, that last point you made, just making the calls is what matters. I think this year alone, you know, my, my pipeline in, at the start of the pandemic, I thought was solid at 15, 18 people. And it was meaningless because all of them kind of went into like 12 months into a shell of fear. And I just started making care calls and just seeing how everyone was doing. And then in Q, they basically the end of Q2 to Q3, closed three deals to start July and then loaded the pipeline up to over 30. And now we're looking at a pipeline of over 100 plus. And now we've got about seven pending deals, uh, two active listings, picking up three more active, three more new listings this week. And it's just it's just really just turning out. And I'm just picking out 10 people a day. And sometimes I get to, to 12, but it's 10 people on my database every day, plus the follow-up. By the end of the day, I'm making about 15 to 22 contacts right around there, and just getting emails out. I mean, no, nothing nothing crazy, no more money being spent. The, the bulk of my money is $1,000 a month going to maps. After that, it, very little goes to marketing other than other than mindset and investing time on, on, on our sales meetings and, and coming to your, to, your, to your masterminds, which has helped a lot. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. No, I love it. I, uh, I appreciate that, Philip. No, it shows. I mean, you're doing all the things, man. I mean, I, it's really easy for us as coaches and trainers to, I wish we could gamble on agents. Albert, we should work on that. Like get some sort of gambling pool. Um, uh, is it betting on a brokerage? Yeah. What's that? Isn't that called owning a brokerage? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, a good point. that's a decent point. Yeah. You're already doing that. Yeah. Well, it's already happening. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but yeah, no, I mean, my money's on you, Philip, because you're doing all the right stuff. Man. I mean, it's real quick. I mean, that stuff just, that just stuff keep, keeps working. Just don't ever lose that discipline and that mindset. The mindset's everything too. So remember that guys, this, I want to kind of bring this back together right now. You're going to hear a lot of people giving you, let's wait till after the holidays. Hell, they're going to say, let's wait till after the election. You know, when you hear that, your mind automatically goes to listing e alert. Okay. That's what, because we got to close to something, right? We must close to something. We need to advance the relationship forward. Okay. So that we get closer and our relationship and builds rapport. And that increases the likelihood that ultimately, they're going to work with us and sign some sort of contract with us, right? So to do that, when they say, I want to wait, say, okay, in the meantime, let's do this. I'm going to set you up on a listing e-alert, you know, and what you're going to end up seeing guys, not only are you going to have a reason to follow up and nurture, you're also going to see they move a lot faster than you, than they tell you they're going to move because they see that house and they're like, I'm on it or something like that. And don't be afraid to set people up on two searches, one for the home they want to buy and one for around their immediate listing. Because the one they want to buy is what kind of dangles the, the diamonds out there. They're like, Ooh, I want that. And that makes them move faster, right? All the while educating them on the value of their home and their neighborhood's current market conditions, right? So set them up on two at once. And that gives you even more to follow up with. Just really watch. We're not overloading the emails. You're calling on them regularly to make sure they're not getting over emailed because that will backfire. You say, are you sure I can really dial those back, man? We've, I've got a big, I don't have a very big filter on that. So do customer service, call them and make sure that they are getting benefit out of the tool. Stay in touch. The whole point of the tool, whether it's buyer leads, seller leads, geographic farms, or, or a sphere of influence is to be able to have something to call them back about. Do your follow-up, even if you text them first. Stay in contact. Okay, guys?